All right, it's official. The Lakers, they've announced the hiring of Darvin Ham as their new head coach with general manager Rob Palenka praising the Bucks' assistant as, quote, no-nonsense and hard-working approach. Sources tell our Adrian Wojnarowski that Ham agreed to a four-year contract. You can see he's having an introductory press conference as we speak. The Lakers' new head coach, he played eight NBA seasons, winning a title with the Pistons in 2004. He was an assistant coach with the Lakers between 2011 and 13. He spent the last nine seasons on Mike Budenholzer's staff in both Atlanta and Milwaukee, winning another championship last season with the Milwaukee Bucks. All right, so bringing in Pat Bev and Vince Carter again. Gentlemen, when we're talking about the list of priorities for Darvin Ham and the Lakers this offseason, Pat, I'm going to start with you here. What should be at the top of the list? Who are we as a team? Hmm. Like, what's our identity? Uh, are we a fast team? Are we going to post the ball up? Are we going to shoot a ton of threes? I think once you identify what your identity is, I think you can kind of maneuver around that but the Lakers just have to you know they just have to find out who, who they are I mean I don't know I don't think you know but we know who the Memphis Grizzlies are we know yep. who the Phoenix Suns are like we know who uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves are you know, that's premature but that, that's honest we just don't know who the Lakers are right now and once once we find that identity I think everyone kind of set in their roles from there Vince I agree with that but here's another question who is Darvin Ham what is his coaching style and when we figure that out what fits with how he coaches. So I've been a believer of this for, for many, many years. When, when you bring in a coach and he has a particular style, put players on his team that fits and matches his style. And I think that is important as they move on because if not, you're not helping, uh, you're not helping the coach succeed, in my opinion. So I, I think moving forward, it's like, like, like Pat Bev, who are we? And does that match and fit with what uh, Darvin Ham's style of coaching is? Like you had uh, the, the last coach in there, uh, um, He's at Vogel right now, and he's a defensive coach. Right. You, he's a defensive coach. Well, get him some defensive players in there as well because he's a defensive coach. Don't just give him all offense, you know, and then say, oh, how come he can't fix this problem? So right. I, I just feel like, first and foremost, you have to figure out those things, and then you can move forward. And then and, Because it's easy to mac, mix, mix and match and go find the pieces that you need to have success from there. Well, obviously, Darvin Ham, first-time head coach with the Lakers now. But, Pat, you played against this Lakers team this past year, and they don't have a lot of room here to make huge roster maneuvers. So how did you see them last year? Do you, is there anything that you think can translate or that you'd like to see this year? Uh, obviously, help was a big, you know, big, you know, big knock on their team, and that's something you can't control. So, you know, Anthony Davis sometimes not being out there. I, you know, LeBron missed some time. Mm. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I just didn't know who they were. I just, you know, when I game plan for the team, I didn't know if I had to close out hard at the three-point line. Did I have to get back and transition? You know, I really didn't know. So, you know, I just go to basics, you know, and close out short on everybody and right. rebound the ball and give ourselves a chance to win. So, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think they were a force this year. That. But uh, I think they, uh, you know, they have a lot of room for improvement. I don't know where that goes. I don't know how that starts, you know. I, obviously, they the ops. I mean, not the ops, but competition. <laughs> That's Chicago. I'm sorry, but uh, but uh, they're on the other side right now, so uh, now I don't want to. I don't want to help nobody out. Yeah, see, yes, that's he fair. Did. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's fair. But, Go ahead, Ben. Malika, uh, sorry, I, I'll say this. Uh, I, I think, you know, I, I think we'll see some type of uh, translation from the Bucks style being under Budenholzer for so long. I think we're going to see some version of that offense. Uh, you know, obviously playing through LeBron. That means a uh, lot of threes and, and, and just there, a lot of movement and shooting, shooting, shooting. And, and that's well, what I was going to say next, shooting threes. <laughs> but, it goes, but it goes back to what we wait, said. Wait, you wait, have now, what to do you say? Yep. That, uh, that, that roster. Yeah. Well, and that begs the question, though, right? What, what the Bucks did is essentially put a whole bunch of three-point shooting around Giannis Attentacumpo, spread the floor, create that space. So does that mean that you foresee, I know Anthony Davis has said he prefers to play the four Vince, but would you put him at the five to create a little bit more shooting there? I think you use that as an option. I, I know where he, what he wants to do and where he would like to, but... He also wants to win. We've heard him say he wants to win a championship. Well, sometimes putting Anthony Davis at the five, playing faster, opening the floor up, helps them win. You Just imagine putting him at the five with LeBron at the four and whoever else is on your roster from mm. there. You can win a lot of basketball games like that. Traditionally, you can start the game off playing the four. But if it helps them win at the five position, well, Anthony Davis could, should sacrifice and do so because I think he's going to see a lot of single coverages if you put shooters around him while he's playing the five as well. 
I was at Anthony Davis's uh, exit interview after the last game of the season this year for the Los Angeles Lakers, and he was talking about how he's willing and wants to do anything to help this team win. Obviously, health played a huge factor in it, but that is something that I would not be surprised if there's a little bit of role shuffle there, especially to create more space for LeBron and, frankly, for Russell Westbrook and to play operate. Faster. Yeah, I don't, I don't, but honestly, you know, he's supposed to give you those answers about, you know, I don't. I haven't met a player that tells you, you know, I'm not. I would do anything to win games. Man, you put Anthony Davis at the five. He ain't gonna last the whole season. That's just the honest truth. He can't take that beating all year. Not from the five. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And and you take their team. You got to get rid of all them dudes. Can't none of, ain't nobody on their team shoot. Well, looking ahead to the Lakers offseason, they're gonna have about 145 million owed to players if Russell Westbrook and Kendrick Nunn pick up their player option. So Russ. His player option, it comes in at 47.1 million. He ain't wrong. <laughs> and remember, the earliest first rounder the Lakers can trade <laughs> is the 2027 pick. So a, a 12 year old. Yeah, so a 12 year old. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.